Hello, I'm Julie. I'm going to be talking about bridging the gap. Um, and this is for one of my university classes. So Rogers, Everett Rogers did Diffusion of Innovations and he pointed out um, five different adopter categories. Innovators, these are the people willing to do and experience new things. They need to be able to cope with failed ideas plans that do not fully work out well, and the uncertainty of new concepts and ideas. They must have a strong understanding of technology consisting of extensive knowledge. These are usually leaders. Early adopters, these are the people typically in leadership roles. People look to them for advice and direction regarding technology, and they are role models, and as such, how they perceive technology is important as it sets the tone of others accepting or rejecting said technology. Early majority. These people are not in leadership roles, but are influential in society with good people skills and relationships. They are not the first or the last to take on new technology. They are deliberate in their choices to adopt not, and they take more time to use it, but are among the first to adopt. Late majority, these people are a third of all members of society, are not in leadership roles, and they wait until most of their peers have decided to use and are using technology before using it themselves. They are skeptical, and it is usually under economic necessity or through peer pressure that they ultimately adopt the technology for use. Laggards, these people are more traditional and are not in leadership roles, they look at the success of others before using the technology themselves. So decision period is very long. Utilizing innovators, early adopters, and early majority through leadership. Jesus revealed to us the truth of life in many different arenas, yet one of the most pivotal and oftentimes forgotten one is how important people are. From the most popular to the least, because as Dinto states in the research project, people are agents of change. Jesus showed us this. For innovators, Jesus, of course, is our innovator. However, we can consider the disciples, especially Peter and John, as innovators in their building of the Christian church after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Innovators are the leaders, the main leaders. And I'm not quite sure how one leads the main leaders. I feel that's probably the role we're supposed to take on. Early adopters. I feel like we see this in Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Where they were willing to immediately leave their boats to follow Christ, Jesus drew Simon, Peter, James, and John into his closest circle. They had experiences with him that others did not. They did become innovators, as mentioned above. Considering this as leaders themselves here... They set the example for others to follow them. As a leader with other leaders, we shouldn't be competitive with them. We should be closer to them. I feel this is what Christ shows us in his relationship with these men. Not threatened, but encouraged and willing to be closer, to share more, and to develop them into even stronger leaders. I also feel that the Samaritan woman fits into this place. Her interaction with Jesus is one of my absolute favorite accounts to read and study in the Bible. Early majority, I feel that the other disciples fall into this category, where they would take on the role sooner than others would. However, they wouldn't take it on immediately or lead the way for others. However, they would be willing to step forward before the late majority or laggards did so. Jesus encouraged these people as well. However, they didn't have that intimacy the early adopters did. Maybe they weren't 100% sold on who Christ was and still needed time to know him, which he gave them. So we need to encourage these people, allow them partnership and fellowship with the innovators and early adopters, allow them to feel included in order to help them reach their decision place. I feel the Samaritan woman's villagers fit this group. She led the way, they answered the call. Utilizing late majority and laggards through leadership. Late majority. In the Bible, I feel that these are those that take some time to choose to believe Jesus Christ is truly who he says he was. 
those that came along for entertainment's sake, those that were on the fringes. From Christ we learn to still be patient with them and accepting. Jesus knew many flocked to him for what he could do, not who he was. The healing, the miracles, the sermons. People came for those reasons, hundreds of people, and he knew that one day they would choose to surrender to him. So he didn't confront them, force them, or condemn them. He allowed them to be a part, to receive, to participate, and to receive. So as leaders, we should do the same with these people. Patiently lead them to a place of acceptance without force, guilt, or duress. Laggards. I feel these are best represented by all those who didn't fully accept Christ being who he said he was until after his death and resurrection. I feel that disciples like Thomas and Jesus' brother James fall into this category. While it took time, once again, Jesus didn't mistreat or exclude them. As leaders, we should find ways to determine who these people are in our agency and find ways to make them more comfortable as they process the information and watch for failure or success from afar before fully joining in. Once again, this should be done without force, guilt, or duress. We should be giving them time to weigh the pros and cons while not excluding them and allowing them to be able to vocalize their concerns. As Schroeder says, we need to allow them to keep learning in a spirit of humility, which is the same thing we, as leaders, need to do ourselves. Christ-like leadership. When I consider leading like Christ, I think of the Samaritan woman at the well. I consider the way that Jesus understood things and how he would ensure that he approached people in a way that he could be understood, trusted, and received. The Samaritan woman, whose name we are never given, lived on the outside of society. While many want to look at her life with judgment, Jesus chose to approach her first. It is believed that the disciples went to her village to purchase food for themselves and Jesus. He easily could have gone into the village and reached them. Yet he considered this woman, considered how she felt, how alone she was, and how his interactions with the village may cause her to be a laggard in responding to him, due to the way that she was treated in the village. Instead, he was able to create change in her life so that she was an early adopter. She could even be considered an innovator, thanks to Jesus' patience and love. This tells me that while a person may be a laggard for many years, to lead like Christ allows me to see people, and, even if they are on the edges of, so of the social unit, to reach out to them too. While it is easier to reach out to those you trust and know will go along with your plans and goals quickly, sometimes it isn't the early adopters or early majority that will bring, bring about results. Sometimes it is the late majority and even the laggards that can bring about the acceptance and change that you're seeking in your institution. Romans 12 tells us that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. We are not to think of others beneath us or are not worth our time. Jesus modeled this over and over and over again. It is very apparent in his interactions with the Samaritan woman at the well. In the leadership role, I need to ensure that I am not overlooking or counting anyone out. I need to see where they are and meet them there. I need to, I need to place my life before God every day as a living sacrifice and lead through example. Jesus wasn't afraid to go first into places that others wouldn't and to do things that others didn't understand or accept immediately. This is why Jesus met the Samaritan woman alone. Aside from allowing her to feel safe without 13 men at the well, he also considered the response of the others. As a leader, I need to be strong enough to value what God wants from my life as a leader and be aware of the voices that will give the opposite advice so that I can follow Christ closely enough to be impactful and allow others a chance to grow, change, develop, and be impactful as well. And here are the references for the presentation. Thank you very much for li listening and have a very good day.